Hello, everybody. Hi. Thanks for uh, joining me today for this training about diversity and inclusion. So, uh, well, uh, I am Elena Leonardi. I'm an HR specialist and occupational psychologist. And uh, yeah, today we were going to talk about diversity and inclusion, unconscious bias, and uh, microaggressions in the workplace. So, before starting, I would like just to uh, give a, a few rules. I would like to to keep these uh, these uh, training really of, uh, not not uh, not that formal and uh, a bit engaging, a bit interactive. And so I will ask you to to participate as much as you can. <laughs> you can just raise your hands or um, answer any question or uh, share uh, your uh, your um, opinion about uh, any any topic. So, uh, oh, well, uh, also at the end of the of the meeting, you can uh, you can also um, um, share your feedback if you if you want. You're gonna have a, a, a link where you can uh, upload uh, your uh, your feedback, so that uh, will be very helpful. Okay, so let's start. So. Um, as you said, this training um, in this training we will discuss the impact of diversity and inclusion on uh, an organization, and then we will define unconscious bias and explore the impact to perspective, as well as decision making. And then uh, at the end we'll we'll define and review common microaggressions and discuss their uh, their impact to psychological safety and environment. In terms of uh, objectives, uh, by the end of this training, uh, you will be able to understand the impact of diversity and inclusion at work and explain why it matters. Be aware of, uh, of unconscious bias that might influence uh, your decision making and be able to recognize microaggressions within the workplace and how to address them. So uh, what is my role concerning diversity, inclusion and belonging for my organization? So. Uh, why why this, this training? Why it is important? Um, a reason why it is important for everybody is that everyone everywhere plays a role from sharing a perspective, uh, calling out someone who is doing or, or saying something that might be offensive for someone else. Uh, so it is important to manage your own biases and microaggressions. And um, and one way to do that is uh, is becoming is by becoming familiar with the with the concepts and the elements of diversity and inclusion. So in that way, you you can increase your influence and promote uh, um, diversity, inclusion, and, and belonging. So with this course, I will I will provide a foundation for you to to move forward and uh, take your uh, four steps that um, that might be be helpful for for your company. So uh, in terms of um, diversity and inclusion, how many of you did in the past uh, um, had any any um, uh, training about diversity and inclusion or something related to it? Uh, I think I had one in my workplace. Oh, okay. It was similar. Yeah, same. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So you're not uh, totally new. And no, no, at no. University. Oh, okay, great. So uh, just to give you a few um, definitions, uh, we mean diversity. For diversity, we mean all the ways people within a group differ, differ from one another. For inclusion, we mean actions that help everyone feel welcomed and respected. And for belonging, we mean the sense of fitting in or feeling like you are an important member of a group. So um, when we talk about a business case for diversity and inclusion, um, why it is important? It's because it's important to talk about a business case for diversity and inclusion because when, especially managers, especially entrepreneurs, people who um, sometimes don't really understand why the diversity and inclusion is important. Maybe they, they think in terms of business and money. So you can always share this kind of uh, information, these numbers, so that they, they realize that uh, it's not just a nice to have thing in your company, but it can give a real, uh, can support a really um, 
uh, also uh, the, 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 the performance of a company. So for example, according to McKinsey, uh, companies with high levels of gender and ethnic diversity outperform others by up to 35%. And then another study um, found that companies with a more diverse management teams uh, have 19% uh, higher revenues due to innovation. The 67% of job seekers consider workplace diversity an important factor when considering employment opportunities. So, and more than 50% of current employees want their workplace to do more to increase diversity. So this is, is important because when we 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 um, make plans uh, to attract new uh, new talents or to retain the best talents, uh, uh, those numbers are really important. So um, it's good to know for for you for for the companies. Um, and then another example: a higher representation of women in C-suite positions results in thirty-four uh, percent. Uh, greater returns to shareholders. And uh, again, companies with diversity are 45% more likely to report that they captured a larger portion of the market and 70% uh, more likely to have entered into a new market in the past year. So now I'd like to introduce, introduce you uh, the unconscious bias. So what is an unconscious bias? I just uh, uh, will show you this uh, video and then we will discuss about it. Uh, I'm not really able to hear the, the video. No? No. You're not able to hear the video? No. Okay. Um, this can be a problem. I uh, try to go into the... Um, um options and do the share youtube video should be something like okay. that let's see Wait, let me there. see if mm. okay unconscious biases are those impressions that exist in our unconscious mind and unknowingly inform our opinions about people. When we make judgments about people, we all have biases. We are aware of many of them, but sometimes they are completely subconscious and reflect our cultural and social experiences. No matter how unbiased we think we are, these aspects of human nature shape how we interact with people and how we make decisions. They are blind spots in our rational decision-making, and we are unaware that they exist. As one famous psychologist, Daniel Kahneman, said, the brain is a machine for jumping to conclusions. We make judgments within seconds of meeting someone about everything from their competence to friendliness and even honesty. If we do not counter these preconceptions, we can make mistakes that jeopardize our working relationships and hinder teamwork and creativity. We live and work in a diverse society. So we must be aware that our subconscious biases and stereotypes can affect how we think and feel about people we come into contact with. Okay. So um, we just saw in, uh, in this video, um, yeah, what is an unconscious bias? What is an unconscious bias is, uh, um, can, oops, okay. An unconscious bias can show up in, um, in many different ways in, uh, in the workplace. And it's really important to, to create awareness about that, about, um, uh, about how our mind can be influenced uh, because as most of the times we are not even aware, we don't, we, we don't even um, realize uh, that we are uh, victims of an unconscious bias when we act and we, we, we deal with people every day. So uh, the awareness is the key to, to altering and shifting our behaviors. And some of the biases that we will discuss are common, some other are maybe less common, but uh, all of them can impact uh, the work environment. 
so um, the halo effect is uh, the tendency people have to place another person on a pedestal after learning something impressive about them. For example, uh, if we see some, someone that is uh, good looking and uh, then we tend consequently to, to think they're also intelligent and charismatic, not because of their actually intelligence or because of their charisma, but just because we are based on uh, um, on their looking, on maybe because they are well dressed, in that case, we will be a victim of an unconscious of an, uh, the halo effect. And uh, then we have the affinity bias, for example, which is also called uh, uh, similarity bias, which is a tendency that people have to connect and to, to, to create relationships with, uh, with others that um, uh, have the, our same interests, that uh, people who, we, who share similar interests and experiences and, uh, and backgrounds. For example, this can be can happen like it, actually it is very normal that happen uh, when we have uh, uh, our um, daily relationships with uh, with friends, for example. But this is not uh, um, is not very good if it, if it happens uh, um, during an hiring process, for example. If we're hiring someone, we cannot base our decisions on uh, how the, that person is similar to us. So we need to be aware of these kind of biases when, when dealing with, with people at, uh, at work. Again, attribution bias is a cognitive bias that refers to systematic errors uh, that we make when uh, evaluate or try to find reasons for uh, other people's behaviors. So we do constantly, we, we make attribution, we make judgments and assumptions about uh, why people behave in certain ways. So, for example, um, because some people see women, women as, a, as less competent than men, sometimes that happens they undervalue their accomplishments or overvalue their mistakes. And then we have gender bias, which is the tendency to prefer one gender over another one. And uh, this is actually, uh, it's, it's been found in a study that uh, one, uh, one and a half uh, more times uh, um, uh, the men are more likely to to be hired than uh, than women, and it's uh, pretty uh, pretty often um, both men uh, and women prefer male job candidates. Then we have the confirmation bias, which of course when we make a, a decision about something and we tend to look for information that uh, confirm our decisions. So we are not, uh, we start to don't even look at the information that goes against them, but we just start to look and see those information that uh, confirm our beliefs. Then we have a discrimination, which is uh, pretty funny because uh, it, it seems uh, it, it doesn't even seem real, but it happens a lot. If you, there are companies that um, tend to promote tall people, particularly men into senior roles. So, for example, uh, the average male, uh, the average male CEO is uh, three inches taller than the average male, and this is part of the reason why tall employees make uh, um, anywhere between nine fifteen percent more than uh, their counterparts. And then we also have age bias, which, um, of course, when assigning the, some task to to people based on their age. So an, a common example can be uh, when, there, when there are some projects, uh, some he tech heavy projects, uh, and uh, in this case, an unconscious bias may cause uh, the manager to assume that a younger person might be more adapt for uh, handle this kind of job. But uh, and at the same time as well, in the other, in the other situation, for example, um, uh, it is unfair to assume that a younger person is not old enough to take on a, a project where he has to lead someone. And um, then we have also name bias, which is a tendency that people have to prefer people with certain types of names, typically names that are uh, Anglo origin. So one study found that uh, white names receive 50% more callbacks for interviews than African-American names. So now I will show you this video and then I will want to, I would like to talk uh, with you guys to um, discuss about it and see what are your thoughts, what you think about and share some, some um, opinions. Hi there. Hi. 
have a minute? There's something I need to talk to you about. Yeah. What's going on? I'm going to be upfront, cut right to the chase. Well, that's your, always been your style, so go ahead. I'm interested in the director role for the business development team. I think I'd be a good fit. I've held a management role for here for longer than two years. I've hired and fired employees as I've needed to and trained everyone on the team. I've executed. I'm ready. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Sarah, but you have a little one on the way. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm very happy for you, but uh, do you really want to be a first-time mom and then have a new, bigger role at the same time? Why wouldn't I want the director's role? I've earned my MBA, and this is the career field I've selected. I just think you're being unrealistic. I, I mean, assuming you can handle a new position and a new baby at the same time, why don't you just give it a few years till you get in a groove, you know? I mean, if there's someone more qualified, no, then no, no. It's, it, Listen, it's just hard to juggle both. And honestly, I don't want our team to be the ball you end up dropping. Don't you think that you're being real? It unrealistic? You know, it's fine. Let's just see what senior management and HR has to say about this. Yeah, big surprise there. You go run to HR to get your new director position, just like you got the one you're in now. Well, obviously, that's what I need to do to get things done around here. Can you blame me? Yeah, I, I can blame you, because that's not being a team player. And it, it's pretty simple. If you don't want to be a team player, then don't be on my team. Okay. So, um, what's happened in the video? What went wrong? Oops. What went wrong? Do you recognize any unconscious bias? And what would you have done differently if you were the manager? Some thoughts about it? Not big answers, just to share some opinions. Uh, I think he's discriminating her because she's like uh, she has a baby, kind of. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. Gender discrimination. Yeah, absolutely. Gender discrimination, and because uh, he assumes that he, the she's not uh, able to take on uh, this um, task, this uh, this uh, this uh, role, because of. The baby is coming. Yeah, absolutely. Someone else has something to say? No? Okay. Sometimes it can be like, it depends what the manager wants. Like if he wants someone working very hard and, and maybe it's true that she has a little baby, maybe that's his decision as well. Yeah. So it can be an unconscious but it can be also his decision just what he wants. Yeah. Yes, of course. But yeah, the thing is we cannot make assumptions and they are based on that. So yeah, as long as the, the person is uh, committed to the company, uh, we cannot discriminate for the for that. Yeah. Okay. So um, then uh, well, let, let's go on because we are running out of time. Uh, what are microaggressions? Also, now I wanted to, to show you a bit about, about uh, microaggressions. Uh, microaggressions are defined as verbal, behavioral, and uh, environmental indignities that communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative racial slights and insults to the target person or group. A microaggression can appear to be a compliment. Sometimes they, they look like a compliment. For example, people who say, ah, oh, but you speak a very good English to be Italian. Like, uh, are those kind of uh, uh, sentences, the kind of com communication that uh, they maybe look like a compliment, but they actually hide an insult. They, they, are, they contain a meta communication or hidden insult to the target group or to which is delivered. So they're often outside to the level of consciousness. So they're outside to the level of awareness of the perpetrator, which means that can be, they can be unintentional. 
So uh, what is the impact of microaggressions? Um, they look like, uh, uh, we can say, they look like a, a sort of uh, mosquito bites. Mosquito bites because if you just have one, you don't really feel the pressure of it. You don't really feel that you're hurt, but you have many of them over time, they can start to make you feel hurt. They can, uh, people can start to become defensive. They can uh, withdraw and they can overreact. Even if it's uh, maybe if you, if, you, if you see the only one, the single one, they don't look like a big deal, but then after many, many time uh, compounded over time, they can have a, a deleterious impact on an employee's experience of physical health and uh, psychological uh, well-being. So uh, we just would like to show you, uh, actually, mm, I want to add something else, uh, a nice way, a good way to, to respond, to address them is always, uh, um, there are actually three ways to address them. First is uh, let it go, so ignore it. The second one is uh, respond immediately. And the third one is uh, respond after some time so you can think about it and give it the the the, help, the, um, um, the meaning that uh, you want uh, that he has so my advice is uh, uh, if you experience a microaggression if you are a victim of a microaggression um, just uh, take your time to think about it and then uh, talk with the perpetrator ask uh, them what they mean with that and um, and then um, uh, ask them, uh, and then tell them that uh, um, what does it mean for you that statement? Maybe they didn't mean. I'm almost sure they didn't mean to offend you. But if it's uh, there's clarity on both parties, this kind of uh, microaggression that can be avoided. So now I will just uh, would like to show you this video, and then also again to talk about it and see what you what do you think uh, um, and discuss uh, about it. Hi there. Hi. Nice day, huh? Yeah, finally, right? Where are you from? Your English is perfect. San Diego. We speak English there. Oh, uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> where are you from? Well, I was born in Orange County, but I never actually lived there. Uh, I mean before that. Before I was born. Yeah, like, well, uh, where are your people from? Well, my great-grandma was from Seoul. Korean. I knew it. I was like, she's either Japanese or Korean. But I was leaning more towards Korean. Amazing. Ham Shastina. There's a really good teriyaki barbecue place near my apartment. So I actually really like kimchi. Cool. What about you? Where are you from? San Francisco. But where are you from? Oh, I'm, I'm just American. Really? You're Native American? No, uh, just regular American. Oh, well, uh, I guess my grandparents are from England. Oh, well... Double, double, toil and trouble. Mind the gap, beware Jack the Ripper. Bloody hell. Pip, pip, cheerio. I think your people's fish and chips are amazing. You're weird. Really? I'm weird? Must be a Korean thing. Okay, so um, yeah, again, what happened in the video? Why do you think the girl reacted in that way? And uh, uh, do you think the guy meant to hurt the girl's feelings? What do you guys think? Well, he was trying to, like, he looked at her face and for him, she was like Asian. When she said, like, no, I'm from Mexico, he was sure that she was from Asian. So she was trying to, she couldn't believe that. He couldn't believe that. So at, at the end, 
uh, when she said that maybe her mother was from Korea, then he started to, to consider her like Korean, even if she wasn't. And the same happened, like the girl did the same to him uh, when he said that her mother, um, his mother was from England. Mm -hmm. Oops, what's happened? I don't think that the guy wanted to hurt her feelings because it was just a thing that she was, he was just looking at her yeah. and she, and he made an assumption. So are you from Asia, no? was yeah. implied and uh, i also think that um, um nowadays some people overreact about it is my personal this is my personal opinion but yeah is what i think and uh, yeah. it's just a person is asking you where are you from is not like where your ancestors are from it's not that they are being racist in my opinion yeah but then he was trying to to consider her as Korean when she, yeah. she wasn't and like and this, she did the same to him like just her mother was British and and she yeah. did the same she was to consider him as British and then he reacted like you are weird but he did the same to her he didn't yeah. realize an unconscious why I think yeah yeah so I think um in this case, uh, Julia, is true what you're saying because uh, uh, it doesn't look like a, something that can hurt. In, in fact, in fact, is uh, what I was also saying before that, that if you just look at the first uh, as example, you just think it's not a big deal. That there's, it's not, uh, it's not a, something that uh, sometimes it says uh, people ask, uh, are are not you um, overreacting? Is it true to us? But at the same time, you need to consider that this kind of people, that girl maybe is the hundred times that she uh, listened to that questions. So all those kind of episodes all together, at some point they make people feel like, uh, okay, listen, I am American. They just stop to ask her. So um, I, I think it's something like, uh, related to the, the, um, the fact that they become heavy after a long time, after uh, all the kind of uh, microaggressions received. So it's not the single one. It's not the single episode. Yeah. But for sure, yeah, the, you, the, the guy didn't mean to hurt the, the girl's feelings. He's, uh, he was just curious. So as we said before, most of the times they are not, uh, they're not intentional. They, they are totally out of the, con of the consciousness of the people who perpetrate these kind of um, actions. And that's why they, we call them microaggressions because they are small, they're little. You don't even realize uh, that they're important. But yeah, it's always uh, good to know and uh, be aware of them. Okay, so um, to conclude, to sum up a little bit, we talked about uh, diversity and inclusion, what we mean for diversity uh, and inclusion and uh, belonging. Uh, we talked about um, the business case for diversity, why it is important to, to have it in, a, in our company, in a, in, in company. And then we talked about uh, unconscious bias. We made uh, some, some, some examples. And then we talked about microaggressions and we uh, saw some example in, a, in a everyday life. Um, uh, now we, we, it's, uh, it's everything for today. I would like to, to thank you for um, attending this webinar. And uh, if you have enjoyed it and you would like to share your thoughts, or your opinion or any suggestion, please leave a feedback at the end of the Zoom training and answer to our survey. Uh, this is uh, will very help uh, to help us to to improve. And uh, of course, I will be happy to answer any question you may have. So you can just uh, uh, contact me by my email. And uh, okay, it's uh, it's done. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for today and take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.